This video is going to show you how to draw the four incident and reflection rays for a spherical concave mirror. A couple things about a concave mirror. Because it is part of a sphere, it's going to have a center, and the focus is half the distance between the center and the edge of the mirror. I'm going to place an object, which is shown on the screen, as an arrow, and it's pointed right somewhere between, in this case, the center and the focus. Notice that the object touches the principal axis and points upwards. So when I draw my image, I also know my image is going to touch the principal axis as well, because at the principal axis, the only reflection is straight back on itself. To draw this um, image, what we're going to do is we've got to figure out an approximation. And our approximation is that the curvature is really large. So what we're going to do is draw a straight line, which I have represented here as a bl dotted blue line. And that's going to go at the vertex, which is the point between the principal axis and where the mirror touches the principal axis. So you can see how it's normal to the principal axis. All right, um, the distance between the object and the mirror, we're going to call S. So I'll go ahead and introduce that to you now. When we start doing the math later on, we'll use this as one of our variables. The first ray is the same way ray that we drew for a plane mirror, and that's going to be parallel to the principal axis and reflected through the focus. So my ray is going to emanate from the tip of the object. Now really there's an infinite number of rays that reflect from the tip of the object, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on just four, and this is the first one. Parallel to the principal axis and then reflects through the focus. So parallel to the principal axis is going to look like this until it hits the dotted line. Not the curvature of the mirror, but the dotted line that I've drawn. That's the incident ray. The reflected ray is going to go through the focus. So it's going to use this point where it crosses the mirror and the focus as the two points needed to draw a straight line. This is the reflected ray. Notice that the reflected ray is drawn long on both sides of the mirror. And draw it long, it makes it easier to find the image later. So the incident ray is short to the mirror, and the reflected ray is always drawn long on both sides of the mirror. So that's the first ray, parallel to the principal axis and reflected through the focus. Now let's do the second ray. So I'm going to erase this for clarity. The second ray is going to be reflected off the vertex using Newton's law of reflection. And the law of reflection says the incident angle is equal to the reflected angle. So I'm going to draw a line from the object's tip to the vertex of the mirror, which is right there where the principal axis meets the mirror. And there's going to be an angle there between the principal axis and the incident ray. And then I'm going to have the same angle for the reflection. So I'll draw them to be the exact same angle. That's the second ray. Third ray is going to draw from the object's tip through the center. Now the assumption here is that this concave mirror is part of a sphere. So because it's part of a sphere, something weird's going to happen. This object is actually inside of my imaginary sphere. So the light ray that's reflected and the incident are going to become the same ray. They're going to go from the tip of the arrow through the center. And if the sphere was real, it would bounce up on the top of the sphere and then come back down through the center, hit the bottom of the sphere and go back up through the center, then continue going back and forth the whole time. But it's not real, but that's part of our assumption for our mirror. So here's the third ray, from the tip through the center. And again, draw it long on both sides. The fourth and final ray that you need to be able to draw that one's the opposite of the first one. The first ray was parallel and then through the focus. This one's going to be through the focus and then reflected parallel to the principal axis. So I'll start from the tip of the object and go through the focus, down until I hit the mirror. That's the incident ray. Now the reflected ray, again, is drawn very long and it's parallel to the principal axis according to my rule. So there you have it. There are the four rays you need to be able to draw. Now when they're all drawn together, they'll look something like this. That's the first ray, that's the second ray, that's the third, and that's the fourth. Notice where they cross. They cross on the left hand side. Since all these arrows came from the tip of the object, that's where I'm going to draw the tip of the image. So the image tip is right there, and the base of the image is going to be on the principal axis, because lines of the principal axis don't bend anywhere. They go straight back on themselves. So there's the image. And you can see that it's upside down, outside the center. And that's because of the three rays. Now, really, we only need two reflected rays to find out where the image is. But I'm going to give you various problems where the, the objects can be located at different points. So sometimes you may not be able to draw one of the rays that you think you can draw, and you need a backup plan. That's why you're good at drawing all four of the rays. Now, a little more information while all this is up here. The distance between the image and the front plane of the mirror, that's called S prime. And we're using S and S prime mainly because that's what the textbook uses. Some textbooks use P and Q, so if you look at other people's notes, kind of keep that in mind. So we're using S and S prime. A little more information about all this. 
To begin with, everything over on the left-hand side of this mirror where the light belongs. So the light comes from the left off the object, and then it bounces off the mirror and stays on the left-hand side. Where the light belongs, that's the real side. So this is called a real image because it's on the real side of our definition, where the light belongs. So the image is inverted and it's real. Mathematically, later on, when we're doing the formulas, everything on this real side where the light belongs is going to have a positive s and a positive s prime value where the light belongs. The light doesn't belong on the right hand side and that's where we're going to have the virtual side like a virtual game it's not in reality so it has negative s and negative s prime values